Hola, mi nombre es Lucila del Rosario, soy la presidenta fundadora de Crecimiento Social Egre Creso y estamos aquí en Filadelfia, Pensilvania, Estados Unidos, para compartir con ustedes de los seminarios de desarrollo humano y técnicas de éxito. Vamos a proceder en unos momentitos a hacer una entrevista a uno de los psiquiatras más distinguidos en Filadelfia, Pensilvania y también en New Jersey, quien es profesor de universidades y también labora en equipo con varios psicólogos, psicoterapeutas y psiquiatras para apoyar el servicio en la salud mental para nuestra población latina y anglosajona. Espero que disfruten todos los conocimientos que el Dr. Scholeval va a estar compartiendo con nosotros como parte de estos seminarios. Muchas gracias. Buenos días. Estamos aquí en una de las clínicas de salud mental en Filadelfia. Su nombre es Nueva Vida Behavioral Health. Estamos aquí en compañía del Dr. Scholeval, con más de 40 años de experiencia como profesor y como psiquiatra tanto aquí en Pensilvania como en New Jersey y en otros estados. Ha escrito más de 13 libros de textos para la familia, eh, para las parejas y para los niños. Estamos aquí para compartir con ustedes en la experiencia de los seminarios de desarrollo humano y técnicas de éxito. Hoy es 3.31.2015 y vamos a proceder para en 10 minutos que el doctor Cholevan nos explique algunas de las Recomendaciones que él nos da para mejorar nuestra salud integral. Buenos días, and thank you very much for talking to me. Uh, I'm very proud of what our group has accomplished in Philadelphia and in South Jersey. As you know, we have 65 uh, psychotherapists here. All of them are Hispanic from uh, uh, from uh, Dominican Republic, uh, mostly, and from Puerto Rico. We have worked here for 16 years and three different areas in Philadelphia and one area in South Jersey. We are next to uh, Temple University here, which is a major academic center, and we are next to Rutgers University in South Jersey. What we have done, uh, we tried starting in 19, uh, 1989 to bring what we have been doing in the past 40 years at the University of Pennsylvania and at Jefferson University where I have been with them for 40 years and the Drexel University which used to be called Hahnemann. What we have found to be very successful is to pay attention to individuals in full individuality to try to look at their inside experiences Keep in mind that everybody has a brain, which also is the home for their soul and for psyche and for their emotions. So we want to keep the brain and we keep on to keep the mind as very close to each other and on top of each other, like they are coming from the same house and from the same home. It is just like a house which can be a home for several people, like you and I are sharing this office with each other here. Uh, the Hispanic people, their emotions have to be taken very seriously uh, and uh, they have uh, a well of emotions when something goes right or wrong, positive and negative. And uh, in this field they call the emotions, it's like the weather, it changes all the time. Although the weather changes, there is a climate underneath, like right now we are in the spring. We used to be in the snow uh, in winter and the snow was all over. So we look at the emotions like it is the weather in the brain. And then we try to figure out what is the mood of the person, which is the climate. And of course, all of us, 65 uh, psychotherapists and six child psychiatrists that we have, they work very hard to change this climate, you know, which we call behavior change or the mood change. We hope people to walk out of here uh, with a smile on their face and determined to uh, make a success of their life. And people who work with me, they know that if somebody cries, we don't let them walk out of the door. We tell them, you stay here till you get a smile on your face, then you walk out. We joke about it and we say that it's a bad advertisement for the place to see people walking out crying. But in reality, they have to walk out with a positive mood. Our mode of interventions have four different ones. 
one of them the individual work with the, ch with the yeah. person which can be an adult or it can be a child or adolescent. Some of the children that we see they are very very young because Latinos have a lot of children and a lot of young children and we are able to take a lot of problems at very early age. The second mode of intervention we have the families. Like for example, if in the family four people have different problems, we see the whole family because all of them are the members of the same family and product of that family. So in order to help those five people, we have to help the family to move from a lower level of development as you have picked it up very nicely in your books. In your, uh, you must have written over 10 books and I've been delighted to read all of them. Let me step to the side to say that it has been a pleasure to work with uh, Lucy, Dr. Lucila de, Ro de Rosario in the past uh, in the past over 10 years now. She has produced many books which are very relevant to everybody that we treat, particularly to the young children. And she takes great pride and helps the children to take pride in their development and their performance. And she has been absolutely a pleasure starting with her good looks, you know, when she walks in and she's always dressed up immaculately and she always has a new book, you know, to share with her colleagues. And she's one of our most respected colleagues, not only in the Melbourne Theatre, but in the total field. Let me go back to where I left Thank off. You. The third way is, uh, is group therapy. Group therapy started in 1924 in this country, for it is almost 90 years old, and that is to pay attention to how people get together. If they're in a bad mood, they take it out on each other, and then we try you know, to change that bad mood, to change an explosive and negative and bad mood interaction into a positive and supportive one. Just like that, the Christina and I, you know, this is the kind of relationship we want to see among our clients. And the, the fourth one is, of course, is the use of medication. Uh, there has been, there are four revolutions in, in psychiatry. One of them was individual psychotherapy and psychoanalysis, which came up in uh, 1905. The second one was group therapy. Family therapy was the most recent one, which is in the start of the 1950s, and in 1970s it got to its height. And medication, although they have been around since 1954, the new medications are very different. Most of the new medication looks to see how the brain cells they interact with each other and, and it stimulates that one. Like for example, in depression, the end of one nerve secretes some material which is picked up by the other one. But when the person gets depressed, this person secretes it and comes and wipes out and takes it back. So the person gets depressed because there is a depletion and there is a lack of the appropriate what we call neurotransmitter like dopamine or serotonin. And this new medication, when this person secretes and wants to come back and take it back, the other one slaps it on in the hand and say, your job is done. Now it is the job of this person. So this person picks it up and the depletion goes away. In Nueva Vida, we are prescribing to the best practices which are done at University of Pennsylvania and at Jefferson and at Harvard, and that is that the brain, it is the same place. There is a chemical basis and there is an emotional and experiential basis, and you have to order with that. And uh, before we started, in Dr. De Rosario was saying that what is one major thing that you know you emphasize? And uh, there are really two things. One of them is the services for the Latinos has to be family based because Latinos have the strongest family base in this country. The second one is that Latinos are blessed with having a lot of children and a lot of young children, and uh, and. Uh, the services have to concentrate on the family and the children and that's what we see all of them together. Like for example in Reading, Pennsylvania, which I visit often, is 50% uh, of the population is Latino. But when you look at the children, 
75% of population is Latino. So three out of four are Latinos. So the emphasis should be on the children. I have to do a commercial before we end. Right now, the percentage of Latino people in this country are between 15 to 17 percent of the population, which is one out of six. In the year of 2050, which is only 35 years uh, away, I would not be here, but Dr. Uh, the Rosario would be at the height of her career. One out of every four people would be Latinos. Like in this room right now, there are like 12 people sitting in any place that you go, there will be four out of the 12 would be Latinos, and hopefully one of them would be the president by that time, because that's the only way to get the attention in this country. <laughs> so I want to thank Dr. De Rosario for all the contributions she has made to the literature and to the care of the patients, and I recommend very strongly uh, for everybody to get his book, her books to read. This is particular one is Counseling and Brief Psychotherapy. It is a guidebook, and I read all her books with, uh, with pleasure, and we usually have some kind of a ceremony of when her books come out, which is almost once every two months. And also I want to thank for her level of education that she has given to the professional community here, and everybody had learned from her a lot, including myself. Thanks a lot. Nuestro servicio de salud mental en este momento en Filadelfia, Pensilvania y en muchos centros de Estados Unidos está siendo dirigido a los latinos, a los hispanos, especialmente porque somos la población que muchas veces tenemos más niños. Por ejemplo, en mi caso tengo seis hijos. Eso significa que muchas veces tenemos más compromisos, no tan solo con nuestros niños, sino también con todas las personas que comparten con nuestros niños. Y... Eh, llevarlos, por ejemplo, a una terapia individual o a una terapia de grupo, eh, a una consulta con su psicólogo, su psicoterapeuta o su psiquiatra, es muy importante. Y no se trata solamente de que lo veamos desde el punto de vista de que tengamos que estar, eh, de que nosotros vamos a estar locos. Nos van a, a dar ese estigma de que estamos locos y que solamente así necesitamos ir a un psiquiatra, un psicoterapeuta, un consejero. Es muy bueno para cualquier población para cualquier blanco de público, niños embarazadas, eh, incluso las embarazadas, las parejas antes de casarse, ir a una terapia, ir a una consejería, ir a una um, uh, coach, una terapia de coach, de, 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 como un taller, un entrenamiento, porque todo eso es parte de nuestra salud integral y también eso nos ayuda, como dice el doctor Scholleman, a mejorar nuestras conductas, nos ayuda a nosotros o esa interacción, como él decía, que podamos tener esa interacción positiva, balanceada y cuidar nuestras emociones. <coughs> Thank you so much for your time. I appreciate your attention. Um, we see you in the seminar of Universal Human Growth and Techniques of Success. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.